Our new research that's ongoing at the moment is into the psychology behind spiritual or religious conversion. And what we're trying to look at is the dynamics behind why people decide to choose uh, a shift from one belief system to another. And so what we're trying to explore is the psychology behind that. Uh, especially because many of the people who do make this switch face considerable resistance from family, friends, often perhaps employers or their classmates. So we just want to get some sort of understanding of some of the, the needs that uh, this group of people might face. So far it's been really exciting. We've had people from as far afield as South Africa, Palestine, Canada, the USA taking part in our online survey and it's been really exciting. Uh, the, the survey's only just been recently uh, taking place and it's, it's great to see some of the preliminary findings. And we're drilling down into the motivations that people uh, have had in switching from one belief system to another. We're looking at the impacts on their health and well-being. We're looking at how they're being supported as well. So it's really inspiring to see some of the, the findings so far and we hope to collect uh, as many responses as we can during the time frame of our study. And uh, then after doing the survey, we're going to be hopefully getting some more in-depth findings through the interviews as well. So, so far so good. People can get involved in this study through the two-phase process that we have at the moment. So firstly, we have an online survey. And so participants first need to visit the link displayed on the screen. Once they do that, they'll be taken to the online survey that we've got running and they need to complete it as fully as they can and then uh, click on submit and then what we will then be doing is doing a random sample of people who have responded and we, would con we will be conducting interviews via Skype or telephone to get some in-depth insights into people's reasons for switching to a different belief system, the impacts on their health and well-being and the ways in which they coped with that shift as well. So those are the kinds of things that people need to do to take part. We hope the study's findings will be used in a positive way and we're keen to disseminate our results as widely as we can so that uh, people in faith communities and those providing mental health services can look at how the health and well-being needs of religious or spiritual converts can best be met. So we're really keen for our findings to have some practical worth and for those who are in a similar position to be able to listen to the stories that some of our participants will be narrating and being able to identify uh, the struggles that people have been going through and then for people listening to those stories to think that they're not alone. This study fits into wide areas of interest that myself and other members of Leeds Beckett University's Faculty of Health and uh, Social Sciences are actually pursuing a spirituality and well-being cluster of research. And so it's fascinating that uh, this research complements uh, other studies I've been doing into resilience and how uh, people can uh, develop a more resilient way of, of living. It also overlaps nicely with the work that I've been doing into the dynamics behind 12-step uh, fellowships of dealing with addictions and how a more spiritual way of living can help to um, get people through uh, their addictive behaviours. So there are a number of ways in which we're being able to uh, see some sort of a common thread that uh, we need to look at how spirituality, which has kind of been left alone uh, for our health and well-being, uh, this is an area that we're very keen to address as a niche.